Good afternoon, and welcome everyone to the session. The title for this session is How Microsoft Uses Ops Manager 2012 to Monitor Its Config Manager Infrastructure. I'm Partha Chandran. I work with the team in Microsoft that manages 280,000 PCs using Config Manager 2012. And I also have Arun and Corey with me. Arun, why don't you get introduced? Uh, hi, I'm Arun Ramakrishnan. I work with Partha um, in managing the Config Manager infrastructure that supports the desktop machines at Microsoft. And with us is Corey Delmarter. Corey works with uh, the uh, data center side of the house where he uh, essentially uses Config Manager to manage a patch around 50,000 uh, servers and uses an Ops Manager infrastructure to monitor that Config Manager infrastructure. Thanks, Arun. So in the next hour or so, what we are going to talk about today is uh, we'll focus on some of the changes and enhancements that's coming in uh, System Center 2012 Config Manager Management Pack. And we'll also look at some of the customizations that we have done at Microsoft IT. Um, and we'll also have some demos around uh, how we could uh, uh, use the management pack to monitor replication in Config Manager. Um, Arun will come over later and talk about application performance monitoring. Uh, even though application performance monitoring can be used to uh, monitor any .NET web applications, uh, in this session we are going to use that in the context of Config Manager and use the Config Manager application catalog uh, for the demos. And then later on, Corey is going to come over and talk to us about transaction monitoring, and uh, he will tell us how we can use this feature uh, to monitor some of the Config Manager roles uh, using Ops Manager. So hopefully by end of this session, uh, we hope that you take away some of the knowledge on the Config Manager management pack and also some customizations that you could do uh, in your environment. And also I hope you will uh, uh, take the ideas of uh, using APM, which is Application Performance Monitoring, and Synthetic Transaction Monitoring uh, to apply that in your environment for monitoring Config Manager. Um, so just to set a context here, um, this session is not going to be in-depth on what is new in Config Manager or what's all the features in Config Manager. Neither it is about Operations Manager too. So what we are going to essentially focus on here is uh, the use of these technologies to help monitor and manage Config Manager infrastructure effectively. Uh, so before I go further, you know, just out of curiosity, how many of you in the room uh, share the responsibility of managing both Config Manager and Ops Manager in your environments? That's, that's a good, good number. And how about uh, only Config Manager and not Ops Manager? Okay. And how about only Ops Manager and not Config Manager? All right. We've got a good, good mix of all combinations here. I hope that uh, uh, this is helpful for all of uh, this audience here. Uh, first, we'll begin with uh, what's new in Config Manager 2012. As I said, I'm not going to talk about all the features that are uh, new in 2012, but at least from a management perspective, what are the things uh, that are changed fundamentally that we need to pay some extra attention? Uh, one is replication. Uh, I'm sure in this last four days, you would have attended a few config manager sessions and realized that there is a new thing called replication-based site-to-site communication. Uh, anybody didn't hear that feature so far? Looks like everybody's familiar with it. Uh, so basically, this change, what has done in Config Manager 2012 is uh, all the site-to-site data communication that travels from secondary site to primary site or primary site to central site uh, now happens via uh, dependent SQL technologies, like it uses uh, service broker and change tracking features of SQL Server uh, to replicate data. Whereas in the past, both in SMS and Config Manager 2007, uh, we used file-based replication. We had files dropping into inboxes and the site, uh, uh, you know, site components transferred those files across. So that's one key change. What that means from a management perspective is uh, now we have this new scenario that we need to ensure things are working OK and uh, monitor the configuration and so forth. One other thing that is also a change is the uh, secondary sites now uh, need to have a SQL in installation, right? Uh, which means that also participates in replication, and that also adds into our management scenarios to be monitored here. Apart from these uh, uh, key architecture changes, uh, there are a few uh, new site system roles that are introduced. Uh, one uh, such feature that, is, that takes a couple roles here is the application catalog. Um, 
for those who haven't heard this application catalog before, that is a, a self-service portal for users to go in and install applications. So typically, a Config Manager admin can now publish applications to catalog, and the users can go in into that portal and self-service applications, install their applications. So that feature brings in two new roles. One is uh, application catalog website point, and the other is the uh, web services point. Um, so all these are added into the management pack so that you, know, you have good monitoring coverage for these new roles as well. And the last one here is the endpoint protection point, um, formerly known as uh, forefront endpoint protection, uh, which is now uh, more tightly integrated with Config Manager. And that particular integration brings in this role called endpoint protection. And this, too, is covered under the management uh, scenario here. So next, we'll uh, look at some of the uh, monitoring scenarios that the management pack addresses here. Um, one, the first and foremost, as we talked about the replication being a new concept, uh, there is a great focus in ensuring that all the common scenarios around replication is monitored in the management pack. Uh, like, for example, the, uh, uh, the central site to primary site and both directional and, and also from primary site to secondary site, the data transfer is working okay. That is particularly monitored uh, using this particular scenario here. And then since, since replication is a new feature, uh, there are some prerequisites to make it work, like, for example, configuration of service broker uh, to ensure that the security certificates are uh, created and okay and the ports are opened okay and all that is covered under the... Uh, configuration of replication scenario. Uh, the rest of the scenarios is probably uh, uh, the same, but uh, uh, is probably some improvements in the management pack perspective. Uh, one is the general health, which uh, gives, us, uh, gives us the performance aspect of the servers in terms of CPU utilization across all uh, the site systems and servers. Um, in terms of server role and service availability, uh, you know, this is the scenario which helps us address any problems with uh, uh, services that are required for config managed to work, like SMS executive service or any other dependent services like WMI, bits, and so forth. Uh, and from a server role perspective, that helps us monitor uh, all the different roles within config manager, like the management point, distribution point, and software update point, and so forth. All that is covered in, uh, in this particular scenario here. Uh, with the backup and recovery uh, scenarios, uh, this ensures that the, uh, the backup task that is configured in Config Manager uh, runs successfully and, and, and it alerts us when uh, that doesn't happen. With regards to backlog monitoring, you know, as we saw that many of the inboxes has been now uh, translated into a replication uh, model here, uh, but still there is one inbox which is discovery that still transfers files from uh, primary site to central site in some scenarios, and after which it uses replication. So there, uh, for to ensuring that the inboxes aren't backlogged too much, you know, we have an alert, or this particular scenario will watch for those uh, scenarios and alert, uh, alert the admins for actions here. Uh, for software update synchronizations, you know, this helps address any uh, issues with synchronization of updates from, uh, uh, from external Windows update or Microsoft update and also for the replication of updates from central site to the primary sites. And lastly, site system role configuration is, is more focused around the distribution point configuration. Uh, it helps us uh, ensure that the site servers are able to communicate to the DPs. Uh, if there are any issues, you know, this particular scenario alerts, and uh, you know, appropriate action can be taken. So having seen all these uh, scenarios that the new management pack addresses, you know, what's really changed? Uh, one thing that is probably uh, makes more sense for ops manager uh, folks here is that uh, this is the first time the management pack has been built natively ground up, and it's also compatible with uh, ops manager 2007R2. And also our partners in the product group has worked really hard to uh, make most of the alerts actionable and uh, has reduced the noise uh, and so forth with the, with the management pack changes, um, which means you know, the, the rules and the monitors are more towards monitors now in this new management pack. So with that, I'm going to uh, ask Arun to come over and demo a scenario where we are going to see how a replication is broken, and we'll see how management pack addresses that and alerts us, and then we'll go from there next. Arun? All right. Thank you, Partha. 
So this is just a brief overview of our uh, demo environment so you can better relate to what we're actually displaying in the demos. We have a, a system center 2012. We have an ops manager server monitoring a config manager site. The uh, config manager site has a central administrative site and a primary site. The primary site has multiple roles installed on it, such as the uh, management point, distribution point, software update point, um, and the application catalog related roles that Bartha talked about. So let's take a look at our demo environment. So this is the ops manager uh, demo machine, and we have the Ops Manager 2012 console open. It looks a lot similar to the uh, 2007 R2 console. Uh, how the management pack for System Center Config Manager 2012 is available on the uh, management pack catalog, and you can use the import management pack wizard to import this. Uh, one of the key items to uh, you know, keep in mind of while enabling monitoring especially for config manager roles, is you need to enable a security setting so that the agent, the, uh, the config manager role server can act as a proxy to discover objects on other machines. So in this case, like say we have our uh, CAS, which is the Contoso CS machine and the primary side. On both of these machines, you need to have this particular agent proxy setting enabled. Now, assuming you have uh, you know, enabled these settings on both the machine, the agents, you've imported the monitoring pack, you know, discoveries run long enough, uh, let's take a look at what all the monitoring pack show gives us. So going under the monitoring section, which again looks a lot similar to what we had in SCC or SCOM 2007 R2, we have the uh, System Center 2012 Configuration Manager pack. And like Partha mentioned, you know, you get uh, monitoring for different items, such as the roles, distribution points, management points, and uh, performance-related data, such as backlogs uh, and processing rate information. The key item that we want to look at for this demo is replication uh, because of the architectural change in Config Manager 2012. Let's take a look at, uh-oh, so it looks like replication's broken. Let's take a look at Health Explorer to find out more about what happened here. So we see that the replication is broken from both the central site to the primary site and the other way around. So let's look at what happened when. And when you look at the state change event data, we see that approximately at 10 AM this morning, the uh, replication link went into a degraded state. And approximately 12 minutes after that, uh, it went into a fail state. Let's validate this against the uh, Config Manager console. So this is the Config Manager console, the new 2012 Shiny Config Manager console. Uh, and as you can see, they have made a significant amount of changes on the console compared to SCCM 2007, uh, especially the new the monitoring tab. And this gives you, under database replication, you can look at the health of the link between the different sites. And over here, we see that the link has failed between the two sites. So what we're going to do is I'm going to fix the link, and we're going to see uh, the agent status turn green again on the Ops Manager site. While we wait for that to happen, I'm going to hand over back to Partha so he can talk about uh, what we've seen in our environment and some of the top issues uh, and what we've done from a management pack or monitoring pack rules and thresholds perspective to address that. Thanks, Arun. Uh, so one thing I want to uh, add on to uh, what Arun did to fix replication, you know, even though that was a, a small trick we used, but the uh, actual uh, approach for handling any replication issues is there is a, um, a tool within the console called replication link analyzer. You can run replication link analyzer against the link, and it's going to analyze against all the common problems, and it's going to report or even remediate and uh, f uh, rem allows you to remediate the link failures. So coming back to the uh, 
top alerts and customizations that we have seen at uh, Microsoft IT. You know, we collected this data for the first quarter of this year, and uh, this is what we have for the top uh, five alerts. Uh, as you can see, the first two bars here uh, talks about management point not available and also management point HTTP not responding alerts. So what we found is, at uh, almost all cases, whenever HTTP not responding alerts was coming, there was also a management point not available following after that. So in order to uh, you know, mitigate these alerts, uh, one thing we did was to uh, disable HTTP response monitor. And the second customization that we did is about the WSS sync manager uh, being not available alerts. Uh, so one thing about this particular component is, uh, uh, the WSS sync manager component is, uh, would, would watch for 60 minutes, and if the sync process doesn't complete within that uh, uh, stipulated 60 minute period, it's going to raise an alert. In our environment, you know, we have uh, multiple products and classifications for a lot of languages, and it usually takes a little over 60 minutes. Uh, so in order to mitigate that alert, which is any way we know that it's going to get resolved after a few minutes, uh, we change the threshold of that particular monitor from uh, 60 minutes to 120 minutes. And then the other customization that we did also is uh, on the replication monitor itself. Uh, one thing about uh, replication monitor is that uh, the link will move from active or healthy state to degraded state, uh, even when there are messages that is working on and it is processing, just to tell the admins that it's not just coping up with the volume of messages or amount of the data that it's about to process. Um, so when it completely processes, it, back, it turns back into the uh, healthy state. But if there are really any issues that really blocked the processing of state messages or any messages, it's going to turn into failed state. So in our environment with 280,000 uh, PCs working with uh, and sending lots of messages, uh, we found that a lot of times this moves between active to degraded and back to active a few minutes later. So to avoid those uh, unnecessary alerts, uh, we had to change our uh, monitoring interval from six minutes, which is the default uh, for that particular monitor, uh, to 30 minutes. Uh, and then uh, the things that you see in the uh, graph here, uh, mid the middle section, SMS exec service not running and agent host service not running. Uh, there was no customizations, customizations done because those are real uh, problems. It happened because of uh, some process slippages. Uh, it was either due to uh, patch time, you know, our guys forgot to put the server in maintenance mode, or it was some plan change activities going on that we missed to uh, suppress those alerts or servers. Um, so apart from that, uh, at least so far, you know, this is what we have from a customization standpoint. But uh, we hope to do this analysis more periodically, and we'll continue sharing any uh, further customizations that we do with our management packs on our team blog. The link to the team blog, by the way, is, uh, is towards the end of uh, our slideshow. So with that, I'll, I'll, uh, let's get back to the demo, and I'll ask uh, Arun to come over and uh, show us how it uh, uh, resolved, and also he will continue talking about APM and how we use it in context of Config Manager. Hello. All right. Thanks again, Partha. So let's look if that was long enough for the replication state to get fixed. Refresh. Got the link is active. Let's validate against Ops Manager if uh, the, set, the value has changed to green in the Ops Manager console. Closing to Alt Explorer. There we see the uh, primary site and the uh, uh, central administrative site are communicating back and forth, replication is healthy. Let's look through Health Explorer again just to validate when this event changed. So going under state change events, we see that approximately 4.16 p.m., the uh, replication link, uh, the health of the link changed from fail to active again. So now let's talk about application performance monitoring, or .NET application performance monitoring, to be more specific. So how many of you watched Brad Anderson's keynote? Like 50%, I guess. Vegas, so we'll leave it at that. All right. Uh, so .NET, uh, .NET application performance monitoring is this new feature in Ops Manager 2012. 
Let me ask another question before I move on. How many of you have heard of Avicode? About half, that's great. So Avicode, for those who don't know, Avicode was this third party company that Microsoft uh, purchased and essentially uh, a portion of Avicode's features are uh, in, built into Ops Manager in 2012. Uh, more specifically, the .NET Web Application Monitoring. Uh, and what we are going to show you is how we set up .NET Web Application Monitoring for uh, the application catalog role in Config Manager 2012. But you do not limit it to just that. I mean, if you have any custom .NET Web Application that you support today, uh, APM is going to provide you a really rich set of data to uh, you know, discuss, identify performance issues from an infrastructure perspective in your environment and also discuss uh, or give feedback to your developers in a language that they understand the exact exception that you receive in your environment and where the application is breaking. So let's first look at what are the prerequisites for uh, setting up APM. The APM agent on, uh, the APM service on the client side is installed along with the Ops Manager 2012 agent by default. But the agent is dormant when it's installed and you need to make some additional configurations in order to enable it. On the server side, uh, it has two prerequisites, namely the uh, Windows Server 2008 IIS 7 management pack and the Operations Manager APM uh, Web IIS 7 management pack, which ships out of box with the uh, Ops Manager bits. Now let's create a uh, custom management pack uh, designed towards APM. Uh, and monitoring application catalog. Before I do that, I want to do a quick, I want to show you quickly our uh, primary site server. So we mentioned earlier that the primary site server had the application catalog role installed on it. The application catalog role, as Partha mentioned earlier, uh, essentially requires two site system roles. The uh, application web site role and the application web service role, which is nothing but a WCF service. And both of these site roles essentially create these uh, web applications, uh, so the CM application catalog and the CM application catalog SVC. And what we're going to do on the Ops Manager side is trying to create a .NET uh, monitoring management pack for these two web applications. So we already have a management pack created from uh, one of our previous tests, but I'm going to walk you through the wizard anyway. Let's go through the add monitoring wizard. We'd select .NET Application Performance Monitoring, next. Let's put in a random name here, APM, MMS. Uh, I'm going to just, you could create a new management pack if you wanted to, I'm just going to add it to the existing management pack. Uh, now we need to obviously add applications that, uh, that need to be monitored here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna type CMAPP and do a search on the name. And both the website and the web service, or the WCF service, showed up. Let's add them. Now, a couple of fields I want to talk about is the environment. Now, you have the option for setting this environment. Typically, if you have a uh, ops manager environment large enough that you're managing or not only you are monitoring not only your production infrastructure, but also like your test and dev infrastructure with the same ops manager environment. You might want to use these designations in order to distinguish between the web applications that you're monitoring. And the other item is the targeted group. The, where we found the targeted group especially useful is uh, whenever we deploy something new, like a new management pack, and we only wanted to target a subset of, our, uh, of the servers that are running that role in order to baseline the information, identify you know, the thresholds, identify some of the issues. What we do is we create a management group on a subset of the computers, we target them, you know, we run some baseline information, gather it before we expand the management pack to the other computer groups in our environment. So the server side configuration, the, uh, with APM, uh, you get the advantage of monitoring performance events of your web application and also exception events. Uh, exceptions inherently aren't bad. Exceptions just mean that you know, the application or the code followed a path that it did not expect. 
you need a little bit of a developer help here in order to understand exceptions because there are instances where the developers may have actually handled the exception in their code or they may have been throwing exceptions on purpose depending on the condition they ran into their application. For the uh, performance event thresholds, we ran uh, the defaults in our environment and we recommend you do the same initially in order to baseline the performance and then you can always come back and change this threshold value at a later date. Going through the advanced setting, uh, we've covered most of it, like said, the performance event threshold. The advanced setting also gives you the additional advantage of monitoring specific namespaces or methods, both from a performance perspective or from an exception perspective. Uh, you do have the option for discovering all namespaces here. I don't recommend that because there is a trade-off between you enable monitoring for all namespaces, there is going to be a performance impact on your server uh, because now it has additional, it is essentially intercepting your existing code. So your code now has to go through an additional path before it finishes executing. So if you enable discovery for all namespaces, that will cause a little bit of a performance impact on your server. Uh, the other item is the enable as entry point. What this checkbox initial, uh, essentially gives you is the ability to measure the performance of your application from when it entered that particular namespace uh, till when it exited. And similarly, you have uh, a, uh, for the uh, methods, you have the ability to enable a sensitivity threshold and you can also measure you know, performance on uh, when the code was executing that particular method. One item to keep in mind while enabling monitoring for uh, both methods and it's called out in the, uh, uh, in the UI as well is both namespaces and methods are case sensitive. So be sure to enter them in the exact case they are in in order to enable monitoring for them. So let's click go, click on OK. We click on Next. Now, we say IIS needs to be reset on the target machines that we're targeting, and a IIS recycle will not suffice in this case. You will have to perform a hard IIS reset in order to perform, in order to enable .NET application monitoring and be able to collect all the event data that you're getting. So I'm going to cancel out of here and go through a brief overview of what exactly happened in the back end when I walked through that GUI wizard? So over here, we have a uh, management server uh, represented as MS, and we have a SQL backend for the Ops Manager management server, and we have the agent that's being managed. The uh, orange boxes essentially represent the different Ops Manager components, uh, where you have the APM service, which is a dormant service being installed along with the Ops Manager agent. We have the interceptor, which is a part of the APM service, and the CSM collector, which is client-side monitoring. We haven't covered client-side monitoring, and we haven't used it much, so uh, it's not really something we're going to talk about much in this presentation. Uh, but that's another feature that's part of APM where you could, depending on your application, you could even turn on client-side monitoring to measure, you know, what is the user experience when they're ac accessing a particular web application. So. The configuration essentially, when we made those changes from the APM site on the server side, the configuration essentially flows down to the uh, agent being managed. The ops manager agent consumes that configuration uh, along with the APM service and the in, to identify which particular web application to monitor. And when you perform the hard IIS reset on the target machine, essentially APM, uh, the interceptor is then instrumenting your code and gathering all the performance and event data from your application. So uh, as your application is under normal use and is being monitored by APM, all those performance and exception events are being captured by APM and it's being piped through the normal channel from the ops manager agent back to the management server into the backend database and it's writing into the existing ops manager database and data warehouse uh, databases. So that's another key advantage with now APM being integrated with Ops Manager 2012. You don't need a separate infrastructure in order to capture your .NET application performance level data. 
It's just a few additional tables in your existing uh, ops manager databases that you would have to monitor. Obviously, dependent on what you're collecting, your database can grow. So uh, grooming is another item that you would have to keep an eye out for in order to ensure that your database doesn't run out of space. So let's look at reports. Before I show this report, I wanted to show you where to access these reports from uh, on the Ops Manager console. I keep going to the wrong machine. All right. So Ops, uh, the APM report has essentially two reports. They're the App Advisor and the App Diagnostic reports. Again, those who attended uh, Brad's keynote or have seen there are a couple of really good uh, sessions this time who, which have talked about APM specifically, uh, where this diagnostic report essentially gives you the real-time data on how your application has performed over the past hour, like you know, how many calls have been made to that particular application, how many exceptions has it thrown, and how many performance events is essentially how many times has it exceeded the thresholds that you had uh, said previously for this application. Uh, in our case, we don't have a lot of data in our demo environment, but you have the ability to actually drill into this and gather that exact exception level, exception detail, including you know, the variables that were called, the call stack in your environment, and be able to share that data with your developers in order to uh, you know, get your issues resolved or you know, have them build and have them improve the application that you're supporting. The other cool report is the application advisor report, which gives you the ability to, call, you know, a graphical user interface. It uh, over a period of time, say we wanted to analyze over a month. I want to know what was the performance, and you know, what are the failures, top failures in my environment, what are the performance issues in my environment, and these reports essentially put that data together for you and show show it to you in a fashion and a graphical user interface bucketizing the different details, and letting you identify where the weak points are in your infrastructure. So let's look at a couple of sample reports. So the first one is essentially our, uh, well, the report over here is a performance analysis report uh, where we're showing that you know, certain calls took a really long time from the SQL site to execute. And we're seeing the top five, an analysis on the top five slowest requests. And it's giving you information on what portion of your infrastructure was, or what portion of the application's execution path, you know, the IIS calls, or was it the uh, database section that was causing the slow performance? And over here, we see a couple of instances where you know we see the database has taken uh, the database call has taken up to a minute or even more to execute. So, what this essentially gives you these are, this is just a sample report. But in, in your case, when you implement this for your application, it gives you the ability to now to identify what are the weak spots in my infrastructure. How is this application scaling up, or how is my infrastructure scaling up to my application? Where you, know, you have performance issues, say your SQL server is not keeping up. This is an essential uh, report that could give you detail into, OK, where are the bottlenecks in my environment? Is it because of the database? Why is the database taking so long? And that's, it's essentially giving you additional pointers to investigate uh, what's broken. And not only do you get information on what's in, broken from an infrastructure perspective, but you could use that very same data to identify whether the application has been designed or scaled to be scalable enough uh, to run efficiently on your infrastructure. And wouldn't, like, as an IT guy, how many are from IT here, by the way? Almost 100%. IT. Uh, wouldn't you just love to go to your developers and say, hey, developers, this is exactly where your code is performing poorly. This gives you that ability. Now we have another uh, report, sample report from APM, which is the failure analysis report, where it's, again, bucketizing the information that it's collecting over a period of time. So in this case, where it's bucketizing you know, the top three uh, issues that were caused in the infrastructure, namely you know, application failure related, connectivity issues, or security issues, uh, 
Again, sample report, you could get a lot more dependent. It's again dependent on your, the application that you're trying to monitor and your infrastructure, but it's giving you a valuable insight into where the failures are happening. If your failures are happening into you know, connectivity related, do you need to look at the network? If your failures are happening because of you know, IIS timeouts, do you need to look at are your IIS application, is your, are your IIS servers robust enough to handle the load they're under? This is the kind of information that you're getting out of this, uh, the, out of APM. And the other item, of course, the one that we talked about, the code defects. Should, your, should the code really be taking that long to execute for a particular operation? Or uh, why is the code you know, generating a particular exception event uh, when it runs under, in the production infrastructure? Those are, that's another pointer, and that's another advantage you get from APM is having the ability to drill down. When you run the actual reports, you have the ability to drill down into these actual events and look at the exact exception data that occurred and share that exception data with your developers and have them fix that for you. So with that, I call on Corey to talk about monitoring for availability with synthetic transactions. Yeah, thank you very much, Rune. So actually, uh, well, first of all, you guys are still here. I kind of half expected to stand up in the room and be like five people. Uh, so first of all, we've covered a lot of content. Are there any questions? It's good to get kind of interactive on this stuff. So. If you do have any questions along what, what I'm discussing uh, about the management pack, about how we use APM for monitoring, or what I'm going to go into, which is synthetic transactions, feel free to raise your hand, approach the mic, whatever. Yeah, question. Yes. Absolutely. So the question was, outside of the catalog, are there other websites that we suggest you monitor, specifically for SCCM? Uh, so uh, that's going to be the next slide. So I'll do a demo, and then we've got a table for you that's going to give you kind of all the points that we're going to talk about. So yeah. All right. Any more questions? All right. OK. So here's the scenario as it happened to me in real life a number of years ago, right? So something happens with the SCCM infrastructure. Deployment doesn't go the way they had expected. And someone, you know, uh, when reviewing this in kind of a post-mortem setting, asked the SCCM team, well, what happened? Why didn't you know about this? And why didn't you catch it before the deployment happened? And the response was something along the lines of, well, we've got some monitoring that we've sort of homegrown, uh, but we don't have you know, uh, a full solution necessarily. So you know, the edict was given to the configuration manager guys, go talk to the operations manager guys, and let's, let's figure this out together. Uh, the funny thing is we're literally sitting like, you know, knock on the door right next door to each other. Hey, let's talk about this monitoring thing. That's a different conversation. So where we wanted to start was, you know, we've got this big thing called a management pack, and there's, you know, a lot of effort that can go into reviewing these things and, uh, as Partha mentioned, getting them down to a very actionable set of alerts. And so where I wanted to be able to start the conversation and kind of build up some goodwill uh, is, is say, okay, let's get some very basic synthetic transactions in place. So once they gave me the rundown of, you know, what configuration manager is, and we went through basically, you know, they opened up and they started showing me these IS web pages, I said, I, I've got something for you that we can turn on right now, and you can start getting a sense of how this monitoring is going to work. So for the folks who haven't seen Operations Manager, what I'm going to walk you through is uh, URL synthetic transactions. It's basically a feature that allows you to type in any kind of URL you want. It'll ping it on a reoccurring basis and tell you when that comes back with the status code that's not good. Uh, for those of you that are in the room that are from the other perspective, from the role that I was in, the Operations Manager, a person and potentially you're involved in a conversation like we were talking about earlier where you're you know kind of going to the configuration manager team and saying let's talk about your monitoring this could be a good place where you could start that conversation and demonstrate some quick value right so kind of a canary in the mine shaft if you will um, additionally if you deploy something like this on top of the management pack there's going to be some redundancy and duplication there so just be aware of that if you you know you kind of turn it up to 11 it's going to be a lot of volume but anyhow so let's walk through this so first of all, you mentioned what are the sites, what are the roles? So in configuration manager speak, management points, the application catalog, distribution points, and WSUS. All of these, as well as the database, which we'll talk about a different kind of synthetic transaction for that, are places where you can set up a simple test to just check whether that page is online or offline. 
So in terms of testing URLs, uh, as folks know, specifically with management points and, well, with distribution points, you can have either one in a given site or you can have many in a given site. And sometimes, like as is the case with the management point rule, you may have that set up in NLB or something along those lines. So you have the ability to get an understanding of both the complete availability of that role or the availability of discrete, discrete management points within that role. And we'll kind of walk through what that scenario looks like. And lastly, uh, so um, uh, Arun talked about the fact you can use application performance management to get at exception data, so that just very basic something broke, and you can also get some performance data. Well, the synthetic transactions are going to give you the kind of third leg to that table, the availability measurements. Uh, and in addition, there's also some performance data you can get out of that. So I believe the next slide, yeah, just has this stepping right into the demo. So for this, I'll go back into Operations Manager. Go. And let's step over to Manage and Pack Templates. So for those of you that aren't familiar with what Operations Manager is and kind of the capabilities that are inside of it, um, one of the easiest ways to spin up monitoring quickly is to basically walk through one of these wizard experiences. And uh, they've defined a set of templates which just say fill out the following three pages and I'll create a bunch of stuff in the background to help you get going. So the synthetic transaction that we're going to walk through today, uh, for those of you who have 2007 R2 deployed, you can use this kind of synthetic transaction. Uh, likewise, for those of you who have 2012, you have either the web application transaction monitoring or the web application availability monitoring, which gives you kind of uh, the basic synthetic transactions and then some, some extra uh, kind of visualizations on top of it. But let's walk through the one that's applicable to what I'm assuming is the broadest audience here, which is 2007 R2 as well as 2012. So we'll go to add monitoring here, <coughs> web application monitoring. Still got me? All right. So we'll say my management points. Stick that in the same management pack. Uh, that Arun was working in so that if, uh, let's say this was my pre-production environment and I'm just kind of kicking the tires on it, and then I want to carry that out and actually put it into production, it's all in just one box that I can move around. So we'll choose next, and this is, we just type in a URL. So I think we've got down on the desktop here, a little cheat sheet. This is a tip of the hat to Wally Mead, right? So go back, get rid of the extra HTTP here, just to make sure that I didn't do any typos, which I almost always do, especially when I'm doing demonstrations. We'll click the test button, the wheel will spin, and then it'll give us a sense as to whether we typed our URL in here correctly or not. All right. There we go. So got the response code I expected. Took a little while, run on VMs. Anyhow, there you go. So I typed it correctly. So now you have the point to add watcher nodes. And this is actually pretty interesting, especially if you've got a large topology, right? So uh, you can have systems located in North America, systems located in Europe, systems located in whatever geographies are of interest to you, and be running these URL synthetic transactions from each place. So let's say, for instance, you had a primary site, maybe, uh, well, what's common in Microsoft IT, actually, we've got one massive site that services, you know, 25,000 of our 30,000 servers or something along those lines. And those 25,000 systems, North America, South America, are quite all over the place. So we want to get an understanding from each one of those locations whether my management points are accessible. And again, it's the canary in the many mine shafts. So uh, for this perspective, I'll go ahead and just use our OM, uh, infra or our, our OM uh, server to do the tests. And I'm going to be really paranoid, so I'll run them every two minutes. Actually, no, let's be realistic. So 15 minutes. I don't want to completely bombard myself. And then we're done. So in the background, it's genning up some management packs. It's taking that template, filling in the variables that I just typed, and stuffing that into the management pack that uh, Arun created earlier. So what we're going to do next then is, you know, that's typically your infrastructure is going to be a lot more complicated than that. You're not going to have a single management point. You're going to have many management points. Maybe you've got many sites. Each of them has distinct management points. So let's walk through how you would go about altering the wizard here. Excuse me. We'll give it a second. Well, uh, let's go through <clears throat> how we would alter the template so that you can do multiple URL synthetic transactions in one basic all-up test. We'll get it back in a second. 
There we go. So my management points, I'll edit web application settings. So uh, while we're waiting for this to load up, a general sense of, are, have any folks in the audience actually used URL synthetic transactions to test? Excellent. Good. All right. So a fair number of you. I'm glad to hear that I'm not alone. So, uh, all right. So in here we could go and uh, alter, you know, the existing request that we've already inserted, or we can say let's insert another request here. And in this case, we're going to sw swap back over to my handy dandy cheat sheet. And we're going to look at a different URL that's important for us on a management point. Yeah, another question. Yeah, so there's a bulk URL tool. So if you had a huge pile of URLs that you need to put in, yes, it's kind of an add-on utility on the side. And then the improvement that comes in the other template is that you can do basically just you've got a little Excel type control. So yeah, question is, you've got a lot of URLs you want to plug in. Do I have to go through this experience? No, you've got either the, uh, what, uh, I'm not supposed to say the acronym, right? The bulk URL uh, manager or something along those lines. Uh, and then um, the new template in 2012. So in this example, we'll just put in a different URL, which is a secondary test that confirms that my management points are up and healthy. It's just a different one of those kind of um, uh, the MP cert file that we want to get at this time. So, add that. All right. Oh, yeah, HTTP twice. Thank you. Like I said, if I'm doing a demo, it's guaranteed I'm going to typo. <clears throat> All right. And then if we wanted to, we could group requests. I could create uh, you know, this that says like my North America MPs. And then take this, move it down. Nope. Move down that way. There you go. And then I could create another group that would say, you know, my um, Typo number two, number three, South America MPs, and so on. So you get the idea. Pretty, pretty straightforward authoring experience. We'll go ahead and hit apply, and it'll save all those changes. Oh, yeah, it doesn't create it. So just delete that out of there so it lets me save it. Let's me save it. There you go. So uh, back to your previous question. Let's switch over to the slides and talk about kind of that full list then of synthetic transactions that we use within Microsoft IT. Oh, the clicker. That keyboard. So here's the table that shows you all the different URLs that we have synthetic transactions or that we recommend people evaluate synthetic transactions against for your environment. We're relying heavily on the management point and the distribution points one specifically. And then there's some checkboxes there that indicates, you know, some of these are interesting. Most of them actually are interesting, both from availability and a performance perspective. And then that very last line all the way down at the bottom, the site database, is a different type of synthetic transaction we didn't walk through. But there's a template that basically says, type in a SQL server, type in the query you want to run, and we'll tell you whether that query came back with any results or not. Just a, a very basic kind of, you know, got it, didn't get it indication. And so that's the query that we recommend you use is just a simple check to your site databases. And again, if you've got the management pack already deployed, you, you may not want to use all this. In fact, you probably don't want to turn it all on in addition to the management pack. But if you have no management pack deployed, or you do want to double up on some of that monitoring to be kind of extra paranoid, then you have that option to choose from here. So there's the full table. I'm sure you guys can get slides as well if, if you need. I saw some folks taking photos. This thing. All right. So the key takeaways. So what we wanted to do is come up here and ideally give you guys some insight into, first of all, the tools that you have at your disposal. So again, if, you, if you're one of those folks who's worked with Configuration Manager, never worked with Operations Manager, I'm hoping that you're realizing that there's actually some stuff inside of Operations Manager that would be useful for you and you get to go knock on the OM guy's door and say, hey, let's have that conversation about monitoring. I saw some interesting stuff at MMS. Uh, if you're an operations manager and you've already either started that conversation with the configuration manager team, uh, you know, maybe this is some things you can bring to them to supplement their monitoring, or you could be the one instigating that conversation saying, hey, I saw some interesting things at MMS. Why don't we try this out? Uh, in addition, <clears throat> uh, Partha uh, discussed how we've actually run the Configuration Manager 2012 Management Pack, uh, actually System Center 2012 Configuration Manager Management Pack, 
uh, and learn some things from it, right? So we've experienced a lot of good with it. Uh, we've also found some, uh, I shouldn't say bad necessarily, but some noise and wanted to share with you what that data looked like and some of the places where we suggest when you deploy that management pack, how you should tweak that thing probably day one, eight o'clock. So also, uh, just a tip about the synthetic transactions, you know, I switched it up to 15 minutes. We did when we turned it on the first time, you know, had it down to two, and so every little bump and change that was happening on our uh, websites, we'd hear about it instantaneously. So, you know, turn them on, but don't be too aggressive with them or else they are gonna give you a fair amount of noise. And then lastly, and this is just kind of a, you know, a gentle uh, reoccurring reminder to anyone working with monitoring. When you're doing maintenance on your infrastructure, uh, when you're you know, changing site rules around or you're re rebooting boxes for whatever reason, uh, it's very important that you put those systems into maintenance mode. And so this should be for OM folks, kind of an obvious statement. For configuration management folks, uh, it's out of consideration both for your inbox, if you're getting those you know, emails uh, directly, or for the frontline folks who's dealing with the alerts or whatever. But there's a feature where basically you can say, I'm working on this box right now, I'm gonna be doing work for the next hour, uh, so turn alerting off for that time period. So, any, any other takeaways you guys wanted to add? No, I think you covered no? all. Good. Before. So, were there any questions about synthetic transactions or just the topic in general? Oh, and I skipped over APM. Obviously, it, uh, yeah. So, while you're thinking about all of your questions, uh, the other big piece is this APM. So that's another aha moment uh, I'd say for us in IT is there's this new feature. Uh, it's been plugged in specifically for the intent of monitoring .NET applications as a generic concept, but since Configuration Manager has built some of their key components, especially this new application catalog uh, component on .NET, you get that functionality for free. So again, it's another one of those things where if you, uh, you know, you're going to take the time to do the detailed evaluation of the management pack, you could evaluate with APM, you can get some basic, uh, actually some fairly complex monitoring the APM feature set uh, in 2012 for your System Center 2012 configuration manager infrastructure. So. Uh, and to answer you on the, what you can enable for APM, since APM is limited to .NET web applications, not all of the URLs that Corey shared have .NET. So application catalog is a .NET based web application in WCF. So essentially you need a .NET web app website or a WCF service. Yeah. Any other questions? No? All right. Well, thank you all very much for attending. I hope you guys have had a fantastic MMS. Really appreciate you hanging out with us. So. Thank you, guys.